course I miss you, darling. This is the loneliest place on Earth. The most exciting thing ever happens here is a day when it don't rain. Excuse me, darling. I got some work to do. What the heck is that? Get on in here, Pete. We got us a big old asteroid on a three-week collision course with Earth. has been named Attila, after the war leader of the Huns, who devastated Europe just before the fall of the Roman Empire. Attila was first spotted in a tracking station in Borneo. According to NASA sources, the probability of impact with Earth is 99%. Five, four, ignition. Boston Lowe said in the press conference last night. If the shuttle is the last hope of the human race, then it'll have to do the job, won't it? Excuse Wait a minute, folks. Let me introduce the landing team. Ludger Brink is a noted geologist. He'll evaluate our data on placement of the nuclear devices. We have to be accurate. The idea isn't to blow Attila to bits. If we did, some of the pieces would certainly hit Earth with devastating effect. And now I hardly have to introduce Maggie Robbins to you. She's probably the most well-known journalist in the world. Uh, Maggie, you're famous for having once said that you never put up with censorship in any form. Now you're under NASA command. Miss Robbins is a reporter by vocation, but on this mission she's... I think I can answer the question myself, Commander Lowe. Danny, I trained for this mission, and I have work to do in laying the nuclear charges. When I come home, I'll be a reporter and tell you all about it. But during the mission, I'm part of the team, and I will obey Commander Lowe like any good soldier. That may be the biggest news story of all. Maggie Robbins obeys orders. In going over your bios, I find that Professor Brink is also a noted archaeologist. While it's well known that Maggie is a prodigy at learning new languages, is this just coincidence? Not at all. We wanted the best and the brightest for this mission. Dr. Brink and Ms. Robbins are not narrow specialists. They are resourceful, widely educated, and creative thinkers. Does that apply to you too, Commander Lowe? My job is to keep everybody alive. I don't have to be brilliant. I just have to be careful. The other two crew members will remain with the shuttle. Ken Borden is the most experienced shuttle pilot we have. Cora Miles is our payload specialist. As you all know, she's a candidate for Congress, but we figured saving the planet is more important than campaigning. It's cheaper, too. Any parting message for the people of Earth? We have exactly one chance. And we've got to do it right. Let all your prayers be with us.
Welcome to the wonderful world of space. Don't bump into anything. <laughs> I'll be careful, Commander. Brink here, going independent. Howdy, Brink. Welcome to the place where geology and astronomy meet. A professor once told me, astronomers are geologists with clean hands and a squint. You going to quote him on that in some magazine, Robbins? I'm just part of the landing team right now, Commander Lowe. So, welcome to the dig, everybody. And uh, if you'll excuse me just a moment, I'm going to mess with the settings a little bit. Um, I would have done this before the opening cutscene, but unfortunately, uh, it uh, when you start the game, uh, even in the Steam version, uh, it will jump right into the opening cutscene, and you won't be able to do anything until you get to about here. Uh, so you either have to sit through the opening cutscene or skip it. Come on. Oh, there we go. Okay. These are the usual settings I have when I do LPs. I... Uh, keep the character voices up full because I'm not going to be interrupting them most of the time. At least I try not to. Then followed that by the music at about a uh, quarter or a third down. And then the last one is the sound effects. Um, speaking of music, um, I have to say that I absolutely adore um, the soundtrack to this game. Uh, Michael Land, I believe, is the guy who uh, composed it. Um, and it really sets the mood in a lot of places very well. Um, also, because this is an LP, I will turn on the text. So just in case the characters are a little hard to understand occasionally, uh, you can just read what they're saying. So let's save these settings. You have to save these settings for every game, because if you go back and, and start a new game, everything just resets to its defaults. So there we go. Hopefully those settings should keep now from uh, when we uh, every time we load the game. Okay. Um, you'll also uh, notice that this is being recorded in a lower resolution than um, uh, many of my previous games or, or uh, games that I've done in the recent past. Um, and that, that's simply because this is an old school game and this is actually the native resolution. Uh, is roughly about 640 by 480. So there really wouldn't be much to be gained in uh, uh, yanking this out to any higher resolution and just end up blurring stuff. So um, these videos are just going to stay at this resolution, you know, which does have the benefit of me being able to uh, record these and upload these faster. So if nothing else, that's something to do. Um, this story was based on a concept, as it said in the credits, by Steven Spielberg. So, um, even if you knew nothing about this game, that should tip you off that it's probably something worth checking out. Um, and I, th because this is a Luc LucasArts game, I think George Lucas was involved, at least in some way, in the production. Um, so whenever those two get together, usually something interesting happens. Um, although, we won't talk about Crystal Skull. But anyway... <clears throat> So, um, standard interface, no real surprises here when it comes to controls for an adventure game. You can click down here for your inventory or you can just right click and it'll bring it up. Right now we have uh, the ability to examine things. We have a penultimate which was the 90's version of uh, an iPad basically. <laughs> Although the iPad can probably do a ton of more things than this can uh, right now. Um, we have an arming key, and uh, it's not made super clear here uh, in the opening, but the idea is is that instead of trying to blow Attila um, up into little pieces, which could be dangerous, like Brink said, uh, we're going to place uh, tactical nukes in very specific positions on the asteroid in order to simply change it from slamming into the Earth to orbiting the Earth. Um, which, given how much time it looked like they had before impact, this is probably, the, even in reality, probably the, the best bet um, as far as ways to avoid a, a collision. And we also have a flashlight. It's dark in space, I guess. 
Although, given that we're in low orbit, there's probably plenty of light. <clears throat> As you can see around here, you can see the shuttle. Um, and also, speaking of the shuttle, you know, this is kind of depressing because, as you all, as you all know, or, or probably know, um, the space shuttle program has now officially been uh, terminated, uh, and we're stuck without a uh, spaceship. We have to borrow from the Russians for a while, um, which was pretty disappointing. I come from a family of astronomers. I teach astronomy. Um, I did want to be an astronaut, like many kids when I was little. So. It's a little, it's a little sad to see the the days when the shuttle was a heroic vehicle, um, but I'm hoping that before I die, we'll end up producing something else and hopefully carry the manned uh, space program out beyond the moon at last. What can I say? I'm an optimist. But anyway, so enough of me waxing philosophical here, or nostalgic. Let's take a look around us. Um, and we're, we're playing as low, which is why you can see we can look at Brink, we can look at Robbins, but we can't look at ourselves. We're, 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 we're going to be playing as uh, Boston Low, uh, Spatial Commander and Action Hero uh, for the entirety of the game. Uh, so let's see. What do we got here? We got the tool chest. It's a free-fall NASA tool chest containing this mission's equipment. It's affectionately known as the Flying Pig. And I recognize that voice, but I forgot to check the credits to see who he is. Um, but I know I've heard him from other movies, I believe. Hmm. <laughs> That's the universal nothing interesting. Hmm. Hmm. I think King's Quest, there's a lot of examples where you get that kind of uh, audio response for nothing interesting, I think. Anything else? Doesn't look like it. It's the pig. Payload specialist Miles needs to use the remote arm to release it. Okay, so we're going to need to contact... What's her name? Oh, I just forgot it again. Darn. But anyway, the payload specialist, whose name I will s soon remember. Standard issue flashlight. It's the arming key for the explosives. This is my pen ultimate personal digital assistant. Yep, PDA. All right, so you click that, and here we go. We have asteroid lander. Um, I think this is. This is a little, yeah, this is the old-fashioned um, uh, fire the rockets and try to land on the moon game. This is just a fun little side thing you can do. And the idea, of course, is to not <laughs> crash, which is what I just did there. Um, I almost beat Maggie's high score. <laughs> yeah, let's, well, we'll see if I can do it once, just for kicks. And this, uh, I, I say the moon, but this is called Asteroid Lander. So, in essence, there's almost no gravity at all. It's, it's a matter of just getting your thrust right. Ah, oh, nah. Kaboom. This game cheats. I know. Well, anyway. Let's see. How do I get out of this? Um. Oops. Okay. Sorry about that cut there. Um, I just had to find a way to get out of that game. What you do actually is you just hold up it so that the spaceship just flies off the screen, and then uh, it'll exit out. So anyway, that's uh, a cute little mini game you can play. Um, although I don't think it actually affects any part of the main game just for fun. Um, but the primary use for p the PDA is for comm traffic. Miles, Cora Miles, that's, okay, that's what I was trying to remember. Sorry about that, Cora. So here's the uh, four other heroes, so to speak. Brink the Geologist, uh, 
Maggie Robbins, the reporter, Ken Borden, uh, shuttle pilot, extraordinaire, and Cora Miles, was payload specialist. So, let's see. Eventually we need to talk to Cora, but we'll just go in order here. Motor brake, command brake. Brake here, I read you. So here's your standard uh, dialogues here. Um, and I believe as long as they have something new to say, these things will be colored. And when there's nothing new to say in any of these categories, they'll just, uh, I think they'll go blue. Just to say that they're not active anymore. Are you getting a good look at the asteroid brick? I have hardly looked at anything else, Commander. Hmm. <laughs> Have you noticed anything unusual? No one has ever been this close to an asteroid before, Commander. I cannot possibly know what is usual or unusual. Now, he says that now, but actually since this game was made, we've had several missions that have gone really up close and personal to asteroids. Is there anything that should make us reconsider the placement of the charges? The original choice of quadrant seems adequate, Commander. And when we get to the asteroid, we'll see that, in fact, it's split up into four quadrants. Do you see any problems, Brink? As you Americans might say, Commander, we will kick Attila's butt. <laughs> As you Americans will say. Do you see any problems, Brink? As you Americans might say, Commander, we will kick Attila's butt. Alright, you see, uh... Right there, the uh, outer border has gone away, so nothing new here. Which is kind of useful in an adventure game to just have that notification. Happy to set foot on a new world, Brink? Attila is a very old world, Commander. It is merely new to us. That is technically true. Let me know if you see anything unusual with the asteroid. No problems yet, Commander. I like how it goes from ask a question to say something profound. <laughs> of course, he's not... I wouldn't describe everything that this does as being profound, but anyway. Let's talk to Maggie. Or actually, no, this is to talk to Brink about Maggie, I should say. What do you think of our star reporter? Very unorthodox, bringing a reporter on a space mission. But she is very capable, and she writes interesting stories. Everything okay with the pig? Everything's fine as far as I can see, Commander. Miles can tell you more than I can. That is true. Low out. Alright. Maggie, what do you got to say? Robbins, this is low. Robbins here. What is it? Getting anything juicy for your first article? I'm not writing my article right now, Commander Lowe. That would be kind of tricky. This is all pretty dull so far, Robbins. I hope you can find something interesting for your lead. Commander Lowe, am I doing something wrong? No, I'm just trying to be friendly. And I'm trying to be a good crew member. Can't you forget for even one second that I'm a reporter? Maggie does have a point. There's going to be many times where Boston comes out as being uh, a little rough as far as his social skills go. Just want to make sure you're having a wonderful time, Robbins. I'm very, very happy, Commander Lowe. <laughs> that didn't sound 100% sincere. Have you looked up at the Earth yet, Robbins? Oh, is that big blue thing the Earth? <laughs> Some people get vertigo when they realize that they're hanging upside down 200 miles over the ocean. Do some of them throw up? Is that what you want me to do? I thought it was something you might want to write about. I actually had a pretty good career as a writer before I had you to think up ideas for me, Commander. <laughs> Ouch. I just want you to be happy, Robbins. So you'll write nice things about us. I'm very, very happy, Commander Lowe. 
I hope you're still happy, Robbins. <laughs> I'm very, very happy, Commander Lowe. I guess we had to get her, get her to say that twice before this would go away for some reason. Anyway, what does Maggie think of Brink? What do you think of our archaeologist, Brink? I'm very impressed with his experience. He headed the U.S. Geological Survey team that mapped the surface of Venus. He'll be taking a close look at the asteroid to make certain the detonation points they've chosen are suitable. Yeah, so that is Brink's primary reason to be here. See that big tool chest? We call it the pig. I've logged a hundred hours working with every tool in the pig, Commander Lowe. She's got... She, I'll say that. I mean, she knows how to uh, train for a mission there. Everything okay with the pig? As far as I can see, Commander. Alright, let's contact the shuttle crew. Low out. What's up, Ken? Load aboard and do you copy? Like carbon paper, boss. <laughs> nice. Are we in position, Ken? Attila's given us less gravity than I expected, but the attitude jets are compensating. Yeah, so keep that in mind. He says that Attila has, is producing less of a gravitational field than they were expecting. That's actually going to come into play here. You're saying Attila is less massive than we expected. Hey, maybe Attila's nothing but a big old bubble. How do we know what's inside an asteroid? Ooh, foreshadowing. Let me know if you notice something that would change our mission parameters. Sure thing, boss. Right now, Attila's sleeping like a baby. You ready for us to park company, Ken? Everything's in position, boss. Any problem with us taking the pig now, Ken? Just tell Miles, and you can take the little squealer to market. This is one big ugly pig. Is that why Cora always calls it her baby? I heard that, Ken. Uh, Ken and Cora always giving them, giving each other grief. Low out. All right, Cora, your turn. Miles, come in, Miles. Yeah, 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 Boston, I'm on you. You, you wish. wish. In, In your, your dreams. dreams. <laughs> <laughs> you tell these two are old friends. How's the congressional campaign going without you? Well, my opponent is demanding equal time in space. <laughs> With or without a suit. Just don't screw up the mission, Boston, and I'll be in Congress next January. I just want you to know, you've got my vote, Cora. Till my opponent offers you more money. Hmm. I just want you to know, you've got my vote, Cora. Only if you move to Mississippi, Boston. Ah, so that's where her district is. I just want you to know, you've got my vote, Cora. Maybe if somebody helps you figure out the levers in the voting booth. <laughs> See how many of those we have here. I just want you to know, you've got my vote, Cora. Oh, you finally learned how to make an X. <laughs> I guess they did a bunch of takes for, for the voice actress and then just put them all in here. I just want you to know, you've got my vote, Cora. Oh, I've already got the aging astronaut vote locked up. Hmm. <laughs> I just want you to know, you've got my vote, Cora. And I haven't even paid you your dollar yet. Man, there must be a lot of these. I just want you to know, you've got my vote, Cora. Just don't tell anyone else, Boston. It might cost me the election. <laughs> we'll come back to these and see how many more there are in a second here. We're ready when you are, Cora. Just give the word, Boston, and you got yourself a pig. Oh, just one here, okay. I think this is going to actually get it out of the barn here, so let's... I'm just curious, how many more of these do we have? I just want you to know, you've got my vote, Cora. It's no use, Boston. I'm not gonna make you head of NASA. I just want you to know, you've got my vote, Cora. You can vote for me 20 times, Boston, and I still won't marry you. 
Oh, I wonder if he ever asked. I just want you to know, you've got my vote, Cora. I bet you say that to all the candidates. I just want you to know, you've got my vote, Cora. Does this mean you've forgiven me for putting a leak in your catheter on your first launch? Ooh, ouch. I just want you to know, you've got my vote, Cora. Well, ain't you sweet. <laughs> oh, we end in a, uh, on a short, simple one there. Man, that's a lot of takes. Alright, let's deal with the pig here. Ready for the deployment of the free fall tool chest. Is the crew clear of the area? Crew is clear. Proceed. with a pig, Cora? Looking sweet, Boston. You just be good to my baby. Alright, it's a tool chest, so let's see what's in it. Load a landing team. I'm taking the pig down to the surface. Follow me. You be good to my baby, Boston, you hear me? We'll be back soon, Cora. Try not to miss me too much. Blow out. All right, welcome to the first of four quadrants of the surface of Attila. And like I just said before, let's actually open this pig up. See what goodies are inside it. If there's a ham sandwich, I would be laughing my butt off. Okay. Now, I always thought this was kind of cool. They just give you a classic good old shovel. And since we're in space, we also get the zero gravity digger. And of course, you need that because if you just have a normal shovel, it's really hard to get, you know, uh, traction in order to bring pry dirt and stuff off of the surface, given that there's no gravity here, or very little, I should say. Very little gravity. Um, and here are the two nukes that are going to change Attila's trajectory. So, oh well, no ham sandwich. Now that we're on the surface, let's see if our companions have anything to say. Frank, this is low. Do you read? Frank here. I read you. Do you see any problems, Frank? As you Americans might say, Commander, we will kick Attila's butt. Oh, no, that's the same thing he said before. Let me know if you see anything unusual with the asteroid. No problems yet, Commander. What do you think of our star report? Very unorthodox, bringing a reporter on a space mission. But she is very capable, and she writes interesting stories. Hmm, it looks like if you go to a new screen, sometimes these will reset a little bit. So I'll try not to get too much repetition in the future. The explosive charges haven't been bumped or anything, have they, Brink? Alpha charge and beta charge are both doing fine, Commander. Is the pig properly secured to the surface? Yes, Commander. The sensors are all active and it's ready to monitor the explosions. Low out. See if anything is new around here. Something we could examine, maybe? Examine space. Why not? <laughs> Goes off screen and then just hums to himself. Okay. Roger, 
Robbins, this is low. Do you read? Robbins here. I read you. Kind of strange thinking of nuclear explosives as precision instruments, isn't it? <laughs> I think it's a nice change compared to thinking of them as weapons. Oh, I see. That's your story angle. Nukes to save the world instead of destroy it. That's way too long to be the headline, Commander. More likely it'll be nukes save world. <laughs> or maybe nukes blast Attila off course. I thought it would be space aliens plot to abduct astronauts, destroy Earth with giant rock. Apparently my career is amusing to you, Commander. Why is it I can tease everybody on this crew except you? Because they know you like them, Commander. I like you, Robbins. No, you don't. Oh boy. It's gonna be one of those relationships, it seems. Let's blow up a planetoid together sometime, Robbins. <laughs> oh, you think of the most romantic ideas. You're kidding. That's the first time I've teased you and you didn't bite my head off. That was the first time you didn't make fun of my profession. Ooh. Touché. I'll bet you make the big the hero of the story, Robbins. So far, it has the most attractive personality. <laughs> I was making a joke, Robert. I know, Commander. So was I. What will you call it? Interview with a pig? No. That's the title I'm using for the article. <laughs> I knew that one was coming. I want you to know I'm very proud of my big American heritage. And pigs everywhere are proud of you, Commander <laughs> Oh boy. Low out. Any comments from the peanut gallery on the shuttle? Load aboard. Do you copy? I'm here, boss. Give us the go ahead on the explosives, Ken. Plant Alpha charge in quadrant two. Make sure you get it on a level surface so Attila blows in the right direction. All right, Alpha on two. Low out. Miles, this is low. Do you read? Miles here. How are we looking, Cora? Taking a grand tour before you get to the target site, Boston? Low, kind of. Alright. So I think if we go out to space, we can pick a quadrant. Yes. Okay. So he said Alpha on 2. Go to quadrant 2 here. Alright, and it looks like we have the surface to put it here. So, in the next video, we will attempt to plant Alpha Char.